Hey there everyone, Barry's Best Honey, I'm Mike, and I do bees. Welcome back to Southeast Louisiana. Folks, we are here on the 18th today, I believe it is. And uh, it's a pretty nice day. We've just reached 55, between 55 and 60. Um, right here at the peak when the sun is up but it's starting to go back down so the bees are flying because I put out some old brew boxes that I'm airing out and they had a little bit of honey left in them and uh, they are on them of course and there's only like two frames of honey in there of course if it was summertime it'd be an entire cloud but not everybody is out here flying right now because it's pretty cool I mean and the wind is blowing out of the north, so that doesn't help. And the hives that are in the shade are uh, are not flying much at all. But since they are flying, I didn't really want to open up any colonies today because uh, we actually have nice weather coming starting uh, tomorrow. We're supposed to dip down below freezing again tonight. Um, but then we warm up for an entire week, probably for the next 10 days, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember right. So we've got plenty of warm weather, but I've got time today. So since they're flying and they're active, it's not a big deal to open them up because what I want to do today is check on those singles that are really, really packed. Just to be sure, because um, I think I told you in the video that I actually went out yesterday, and I'm a little behind, about seven days or so each video, but uh, it's uh, getting to where those singles had, had you know, another 10, 14 days to fill out, but uh, they had some warm weather and a lot of rain, so I'm not so sure... How much they filled out i want to go take a look because what we don't want to do is wait until march and they filled out the entire box and either done one of two things built swarm cells and swarmed or ate yourself all the way out of the stores they had um, we're getting to the point the red maple was a nice influx of, of nectar but now you're seeing that taper off and now the the nectar flow it kind of peaks and then goes down until we see blueberries and blackberries and all that stuff come in um, they're hitting the wild mustard and the butterweed and I'm sure there are a few other little things weird little aster looking flowers But I don't think it's aster and so uh, but not enough to really sustain a very very Growing fast growing fast-paced colony So this is the point of time where we need to watch out as I'm trying to boost them at the same time There was nectar coming in, but now there's not you know It can work against you if you're not careful, but outside of that coming out of winter I've never starved them and I don't want to start now um, that's something we can control so singles are always critical all my doubles should be fine um, but the singles I want to check so let's take a look see if we can get into a mainly the three big ones and uh, make sure and then I'll just weigh the other ones uh, but the three big ones I want to go in because I want to make sure that hadn't for whatever reason built any swarm cells you know I'm still I'm still pulled back on the throttles a little bit because my colonies aren't huge right now but at the same time um, I don't usually sweat it too much up until the last week of February, but we're getting to be at the last week of February and some of those singles were packed. So all I'm gonna do, folks, is I'm gonna pick the box up by the back, but I wanna check, I got ants all over this, but they were under this board. But yeah, they got it stuck down pretty good. I just wanna see what their food's like and their population's like. I'll be the person that goes to work all week and when I see the beautiful weather, I'll just be concerned that my bees are currently swarming the whole time I'm at work because I didn't at least look. But these are not going to swarm, although they have eaten all the protein and the fondant. So these were very heavy. I didn't. They didn't have to have fondant, but surely they're running through honey. They're still very heavy. So let's take this off. Ooh, I ran them all down in there. There's actually a good population, but no need to worry. They're swarming, I don't think, because they're not packed all the way out to the outside. What I like to do is tip the boxes up and see what we're looking like. I'm glad they ate the... Here they come. Now they're coming up. So we got... They're packed through here, this whole brood nest. Um, but they're not all the way out here, but that's all honey. Let's make sure. Let's flip it up real quick and double check the bottom. Let's 
Nice cluster. No worry with swarming old Jay Z Beezy cup. Uh, we're not going to go through any frames. But this one I wasn't really concerned with because I knew it had a lot of honey. It's very heavy, so they have plenty of stores. I gave them a pond just because I was wanting to get hive alive on them. So if we pull, pour a little smoke to them. So when you look at these, now we got them pushed back. Five frames of bees, pretty much decent cluster. They're going to grow, but now this is all honey, so the brood nest is comp is continuing to multiply in here as the weather gets really nice this week. They're really going to put in some brood and, and emerge some. These, being full of honey, they'll begin to consume it, of course, because there's no major flow on. But at the same time, there is some stuff coming in. So, got to watch them that they don't, you know, begin to backfill their nest with a little bit of nectar that's coming in. And most likely, we'll need to give them a deep. So, that's what this, that's what this looks like to me. It's heavy for sure. They have got plenty of food. There's no doubt about that. This thing is very heavy, actually one of my heaviest singles I've got let's move on to the next the one over there and the one in the other yard it's the only other one I'm really concerned with it they are both very light so I will have to put bonnet on those um, today yeah see oh goodness this is the kind of colony that will absolutely blow through their stores they have roach it was in there goodness gracious they will blow through their store so fast as they brood up. This is a big colony. I'm not going to shake those down. I don't want to start disturbing them more than they need to. They're in the shade. They're cold. I'm going to look at the bottom and make sure there's no swarm cells. This one this week will get a deep on it for sure. This one and the one next door are the ones I'm most concerned about swarming. Um, if we don't have them ready to go. With the freeze coming tonight... I'm not going to put a box on them today, but I will the next day or so. I need to clean up bottom board. So there's our, our nest. Still a little smoke to it, just kind of see. They're actually pretty, got pretty good weight to them. Might have put a little bit of that red maple in. I like to do this to see if we got any cups. I don't think we'll have cups. This. I really don't. I don't sweat it too much this early in our region. And remember, I'm not telling you guys how to. It's not a how-to video. This is definitely a how I do video. I would never dare try and tell y'all how to keep bees. I'm telling you how I keep them. But uh, I think we're pretty safe. They'll get a box this week though. It's time to grow these up. I got some nukes to make for some people. So I want to go ahead and start thinking about where I'm going to make them from, and this might be one. Kind of slow them up at the beginning. So, I'm not going to give them a pollen sub. What I'm going to do is just give them a fondant. I'm going to go back and give that other one a fondant and a sub. But this one, it's actually got weight. But I think the fondant will guarantee me we don't have issues. These are some cold mm -hmm. bees. You, you can tell they're in the shade. Now, I'm not putting any Super DFM on. That's a 30-day regiment, so I don't put that on every single time I'm in them. I'm still, man, they're, they got some weight, but that's bees and brood, too, so I can't miscalculate that. It's not just honey. I want to make sure they got food. All right. That'll do them. And just like that. We're growing into spring, folks. So I am going to put pollen on that other one. Um, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I thought about doing this a while back, and one of the viewers actually suggested this to me. And I knew I was going to do half a sub to, you know, not let the beetles get too far ahead of the bees. But then Kenny, he's the beekeeper down the road we, we swap ideas regularly with. He suggested the same thing and he's doing it where he cuts this into strips and lays it over the open areas more pollen, pollen sub over the open part of the frame than over the top of the frame i didn't really have time because i was so far behind and flustered but uh i'm gonna do that with this one and go help these bees over there with a little more sub so what i'll do for example is i'm only using half a sub 
Um, I don't have to cut it, I can rip it, but what I'm gonna do is, so when I cut it like this, then I'm gonna turn around and just cut these strips. Because the problem with beetles, they lay the eggs and then the larvae get onto the, into the part that's over the frames and they hide and the bees can't get to them because they're, be they're between the pollen and the frame. The open areas the bees can clean out. So that's kind of the thought on this. See how long it's taken. I obviously don't have time to do this when I'm rushing, but I have time today. Not that these can't guard against the beetles that's strong enough, but I just want to try it. So this is an idea for maybe a wheat colony I could do this. They seem to like this global sub with Hive Alive in it. And I seem to like using it. Look at that. Get all that trash out. They even drug some out. They're ready for me to be out of here. It's just not great weather. They're wanting to get ready to cluster. It's evening. Alright, so that's half a patty split up in strips. So if I were to go out and just take a bunch of patties and cut them in strips ahead of time, throw them in my box and know that, you know, X amount of strips makes one half a patty, um, I think we'd be good to go. We could do it that way next time. But, because uh, I saw larvae in some already. Um, I left them on because they were almost consumed. But, uh, and the bees, as, they, as the larvae will come out, hopefully they're strong enough to get the larvae. But if it's a weaker colony, they can overrun them because they'll sit and breed and eat. Instead of going through the honey and sliming it, They'll sit and breed and eat in that pollen and still make a huge mess. And some will still go down in that honey. And it, it's just not something we need to do to our bees. Um, here down in southeast Louisiana is propagate small hot beetles. I sure don't want to do it. All right, I'm going to check that other one next door. So, so far, so good. Definitely need a box on that one here in a week. Maybe, you know, this week. I'm going to check one next door. So the activity on the column of the hives is definitely slowing down at this point. The sun's going down, cooling off. Uh, so far we had one that was good and heavy. We had one that was not super heavy, but not super light, but gave it fond it. The other one nothing. Then we got this one. This one I suspect has a lot of bees. It's light. So this is definitely light. There's a bee that came back with pollen and never made it into the colony. Look at this. Look at the little bee. Camellia pollen, I'm sure. Possibly uh, wild mustard. So let's see what these are. They're very light. And very packed. Look at that. So this is a colony that is over packed. They need a, they need a deep soon. So that in, in 10 days to two weeks, they really grew. Um, a lot So let's see what the bottom looks like let's get a little smoke under here Yeah, this one's gonna need a box. I'll give them a box probably day after tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow depends On the rain No worries back here. Just a very packed box of bees. There will be worries soon. I Doubt there's any even even any cups. It's just they just Now next week it'll be on this week. I just I was pretty confident we weren't going to see any just because of the weather and the way the bees have just hit that growth spurt. They're still putting drones in. I mean, it's just not that time. This thing will definitely uh, get a second box this week, no doubt. But the biggest problem I need to be concerned with on these is starvation. So they'll get a fondant now and they'll probably get one this week. So let's get that on there really quick and get them closed up. The beetles are on here, but they're moving slow. And I, I want to get them set for the cold weather coming. And yeah, they'll get a box. I got a box standing by ready for them. All right, so we're going to rock them back down. Nice box of bees. Beautiful box of bees. So I got some poly, uh, some bonded cut. Man, this is a nice box of bees. Yeah, I'm definitely going to get them a, get them a nice uh, deep with some drawn frames in there and let this queen really build up. I'm gonna have to watch them for food, of course, but uh, that'll be nice. But food is gonna be a big thing. Can I actually stick a couple frames of honey in I got from the freezer. That'll take care of that. Yeah. 
that colony's been steady growing. I know where that queen came from. That's a good queen. She might be, uh, she might be graft criteria for right now. So we're gonna look and watch her and keep an eye on her. It's an Italian queen, and uh, they they grow monstrous. So I got one other one to look at over in the back. I'm gonna look at this one. I reduced to a single. It was light. I might throw some fondant on it, but uh, it's weak. Uh, probably got five frames of bees at best. So I'm gonna look at it real quick, and then I'm gonna take you to that one that's also probably light. So that one's definitely light. What I'll have to do when I throw that double, and I think I just mentioned it was, I'll put a double on there, but what I'll do is I'll configure it in the barn with probably like four frames of honey in the top, two on each side, um, so that when they do move up, there'll at least be some honey. I, we don't have to worry about the freezes so much here because, I mean, unless we get a big one and at that point, I'll make sure they have some fondant. The freezes will be for, what, a night? Like tonight, we'll have a freeze tonight. Then they'll be able to move back around again. The problem with it is there's no major honey in it now and there's no major nectar coming in outside of what they got off these silver maples and then later off the red maples but we put a second deep on them they get to brooding up a lot and there's not a lot of nectar coming in they're gonna need some honey to eat on um, and push comes to shove I'll throw a bucket of syrup on but uh, we'll watch them as soon as we start seeing some nectar come in then I don't worry anymore they make it they figure it out and it works well I just monitor them they'll put weight on pretty quick once the time comes so quick that if I'm not careful, we'll be pushing swarms out the front by the 1st of April. I decided to open this for y'all anyway. What the hey? We're not doing anything else, right? They're all at the top. Don't let this number fool you. This is not a super strong colony. As far as this thing being swarm ready, it's not. I reduced it only actually during the winter. Look at them beetles up. Oh, this went down in there. They ate their pollen. So nobody's being slimed from beetles because they kept up with the beetles in the pollen. This one had larvae in it and I left it on there. Kind of was concerned because it's kind of weak. But it's only one, two, three, four, five, six frames. Um, it was a double. So that's what's concerning. We'll take a look in the bottom, see what it looks like from there. So that's the bottom there. So like I said, one, two, three, four, five, really five frames of bees. Um, they're on the outsides, but that's five frames of bees. I was disappointed in this one. It was so strong. Uh, I'm not sure what happened to it after the honey flow. Same thing, I guess, is the rest drought and nothing coming in. Me treating the drought like it's a dearth and it wasn't. Totally different. And if you'll notice, yeah, see, so there was a little slime. Look, so the beetles did get in there some. We're gonna have to clean that off. They maintained it, but there's bunches of dead bees under this that I had pulled off of the board before. So a lot of bees died out in here. So we could have a virus situation, I don't know, but they haven't dwindled since. They've done nothing but grown. So uh, we'll check the mites early on in the season. But there you go, there's a prime example, the beetles in the, in the pollen, which is on the back of this thing. They're not, they're not a good pest to have, I can tell you. Clean that all that mess off, them larvae's off. Put this back in. Yeah, something, something bad happened to this colony. I don't know what it was. If it was a virus that would kill all those bees like that, it shouldn't have just stopped. It should have kept killing, and it did. So I don't know what it was that did it to them. They got, this one's kind of like that other one that's kind of got a little bit of weight to it. I'd love to give them some supplement, but I'm not going to because of the beetle situation. I just got mad. I gave y'all some food. There we go. This is the last one of the day, folks, that I'm really interested in seeing growth. Weight-wise, I know they were light. But they put some weight on the goldenrod. And I gave them some two to one and they really filled out good. So they're not bad. I will throw a, a fondant on there. I got a different fondant, one that's uh, from the Super DFM people. Strong microbials. They're making one now. It's got rocket fuel and all that good stuff. Hey, you know, I put one on a single and they ate it right up really quick. They consume it very fast. I don't like that about it. I like the idea that it's got the Apis Biologics in it, but, and it's got the Pro DFM Probiotic. Look at that beetle. What I don't like 
is how fast they consume it. It doesn't feel like it's inverted sugar either, but I guess it is. I don't know. One of the beetles. Uh, so far, everybody has really eaten up their, what you call it, their pollen. I don't see any issues. They have eaten this fondant, obviously. Now, this one doesn't seem to have grown as much. Let's look at the bottom. One, two, three, four. About six frames, no, about seven, maybe, on the top. The bottom what really tells us. Let's see what's on the bottom. You're getting irritated. It's just not the time of day. I'm surprised they haven't been eating me up, but... Yeah, see, it's a good nest. It's all slid over. So, yeah, about seven, like I counted up top. Seven on the bottom, seven on the top. That's a thick nest. They'll need a box pretty quick. Again, we, I like to smoke the bottom when I've got the weather. If this was much colder, I wouldn't have done this, but it's not quite cold enough yet. That they are wanting to start to cluster now, but I think we're all right. It's, sun's still up a little bit. So again, no, no signs of any cups or anything like that. And this is normal for our time of year, mid, mid to end February. We'll start seeing them. I have seen strong, strong colonies at the end of February that are ready to swarm. But I guess it's just how I bring mine through winter. I don't really feed them up a lot in the fall and get them super, super strong. I got really relatively small nests. This year it was smaller than normal, which was very concerning. But my nest normally ain't super huge. Um, it's contradictory to what a lot of people teach, but you know, I'm me and I do me. Uh, and I've had good success bringing them through with smaller, not this small this year like I did, but normally smaller than normal. Uh, because they seem to just winter fine because we have such a short winter and they've been so warm the last few years um, well, we had a couple cold cold ones like three years ago but uh, no they do they do good and they come out and their swarm mechanism is normally tripped right around the beginning of March into the second week of March uh, again there's been a few instances of earlier than that last year we had one but and, and, I, and I wouldn't be surprised if there's one or two out there that if I were to leave them, they would do it. But uh, I think we're fine right now. No problem. So we are going to give them a fondant. They got weight to them. Uh, they're like that second one we looked at. They got some weight. But yeah, they. I'm thinking a lot of that is bees because it's all on this side. So this one here, you pull the paper off of it. I guess you do. You put it on the nest like all the others. But what I don't like about it is how fast they go through it. Since I bought so much Pro DFM, they kind of gave me a box of it as a bonus to try. I'd also gotten a free one at the Slidell conference. So when I cut these up, basically four strips is half a half a sub. And I'm going to do it like this. I think I I had forgotten that's what I had planned to do, and then by that time it was too late. And Kenny reminded me this morning that's what he did. And very smart idea. That leaves less. Again, here's here's this theory on this, because where our beetles are gonna have the issue, the beetles will lay the eggs, and the larvae they'll lay it into this pollen sub on the edges wherever they can into the frames, and the larvae will hatch and go inside this pollen sub and begin to feed and grow. The bees can't get to them when they're on top of the frame right here. They can only get to the beetles that are in the gap, the larvae, and clean those out. So what we're doing is eliminating most of the frame now I've told you before in other videos I know there's a, a frame and I know the bee supply in Texas sells it what's his name uh, Blake Shook over there they sell it somebody else made it and you can make them pretty easy and all they are is a piece of hardware cloth built on a frame you put like a shim and it's got a square piece of hardware cloth and you stick it on that and it sits just above the frames so bees can guard the entire bottom and eat through the hardware cloth great idea i just don't i hate woodwork and i'm not building that many and i'm not buying that many i think i'll uh if i have strong bees it can usually keep the uh the, the larvae in check so far uh they have hopefully the rest did that'll last them a little bit they got a little bit of weight oh i'm gonna i'm gonna right that I need to make sure and give them I might give them a full fondant because they're not ready for a deep when I give them a second deep then I'll put honey in it but they're not ready for that yet so I'm gonna hold off and what I'm probably gonna just do is uh, uh, this week 
I'll probably throw another fondant on there. Um, just to be sure. All right, folks. Well, look, I'm going to go ahead and go. That's it. That's all I want to do today. I got a couple other singles over there I'm not concerned with a bit. Uh, I know they're not going to swarm. I'm just going to feel them and see if they're heavy. Uh, they were. If not, of course, I'll feed them. But I do go through anytime I'm out here like this. I will go through and check every single weight. This time of year, starting probably in mid to end of January all the way through. I check them periodically through December, of course. But starting around third week of January, I'm checking about every week. Just, just tug it on the collins, just to be sure, just to be sure. And uh, that's what I'll do right now is tug on each one, make sure we're good to go. Always check weights all the way till about the, oh, I'd say in another three weeks, which would be what, the first week of March, going into the second. From that point forward, I won't worry anymore about uh, brooding outside of their food stores. So we'll be good at that point. Um, always have been, never starved, never seen them starve after that um, because they're usually bringing in nectar by then or I've left them plenty of honey so or I've moved honey into them because we're going through colonies regularly by that time so there you go once again folks that's another video another how I do production <laughs> I really appreciate you guys watching hope you enjoyed this video it's Barry's Best Honey I'm Mike and I do bees y'all have a wonderful week and may God bless you we'll see y'all later